Hello folks. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is George Pope, otherwise known to you as the Research Guy. Uh, I'm bringing you a special paper this morning, and I know I said I was only going to do one a week, but it's the first week, so we're going ham. Uh, we're doing two, and maybe three. Uh, we could even do more. We, we might do every day. This could be an everyday thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we got a cool paper today. It's on Alzheimer's. Uh, it's called Deserine Levels in Alzheimer's Disease, Implications for a Novel Biomarker Development. Um, it's by, excuse me as I butcher these names, C. Madeira, M. V. Lorenco, C. Vargas Lopez. Uh, this paper actually came out of Brazil, um, in Rio de Janeiro, the Institute of Biomedical Sciences. Um, it, it was published in Nature, otherwise known as Nature, but science is neat, so it's Nature. I uh, don't know how they wrote that one wrong. Uh, and it was published online on May 5th, 2015 in Transitional uh, Psychiatry. And so we're going to talk about this paper today because Alzheimer's affects 5.1 million people. Um, and by 2025, it's supposed to be somewhere around 7 million. Uh, but it, I believe it's going to be even more due to the fact that we'll talk about it later. There's some possible correlation between depression and Alzheimer's and with all the stimulation we have going on today and how people hit highs and lows really quickly and the drugs that we have available, depression is becoming more and more common. So therefore Alzheimer's might be becoming more and more common, but we'll talk about it later. Uh, but what is Alzheimer's? It's a complex neurological disorder. Uh, I don't really know the specifics behind what happens uh, in the brain. I know that there's a chemical slash a 36 to 48 amino acid chain called amyloid beta, which we'll be talking about a lot today, uh, otherwise known in reference in papers as AB. Um, and it's a 36 to 48 amino acid chain that when folds incorrectly, clumps together with other uh, amyloid betas and attacks nerve cells in the brain and causes, and there's a huge correlation between these components and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, another thing that we're going to be talking about today is cerebrospinal fluid, which is a fluid that kind of is around your spine and around your brain, as the name suggests. It acts as kind of like a water barrier, so you don't hit your brain on your skull every time you go like this, uh, so you don't get super big concussions. Uh, so don't do it too often, but you know, if you're listening to some good music, go ahead and do a little headbang. Another thing we're going to be talking about is deserine. That's actually the first letter and word in the title. D-serine is an amino acid. Uh, it's one of the most popular amino acids. Um, and specifically, they're looking for a correlation between D-serine, amyloid beta, and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the purpose of the study, as I just said, was to see if there, we can use D-serine as a novel biomarker. Because biomarkers are super important in Alzheimer's disease because you want to try and catch the disease as early as possible. That we can work on enhancing memories and enhancing cognitive activities to keep your brain sharp and alert. Um, now, their proposed method is that they're going to take a look at dead Alzheimer's patients' brains compared to normal human brains. I don't mean to put people in categories in this video, but I kind of have to call some people Alzheimer's disease infected versus normal. Um, so sorry. But they're going to take a look at those differences and take a look at the specific levels of D-serine in those brains, see if there's a difference. If there is, they're going to go ahead and move forward and, oh, excuse me, that's two videos in a row now, see if there's a connection between these amyloid betas and D-serine production. Uh, that specifically is going to be happening in a mouse. And then for the third thing that they're going to be doing, they're going to be comparing D-serine levels um, in the cerebrospinal fluid in patients that have Alzheimer's disease, that have depression, and that are just normal. Uh, so let's hit the results, right? Because that's what we're interested in. We're here for concrete, clear results. Uh, the D-serine in Alzheimer's disease patients that have died and they looked at their brains, uh, they looked at three specific parts of the brains. They looked at the hippocampus, the parietal cortex, and the occipital cor cortex. I don't know where those are in the brain. Uh, I haven't done enough anatomy in my college career. Speaking of which, go to Oregon State, go Beavs. Um, they did a comparison of those three sections of the brain, 
uh, to Alzheimer's disease patients and normal patients, and they found a statistically increased levels of D-serine in the hippocampus and the peridial cortex, uh, but they didn't see anything really in the occipital cortex. Um, so that's pretty neat. So that confirmed their first idea of let's just see if there are increased levels in the brain or not. So then they went on to the mouse model, right? We're doing that human mouse model correlation, see what happens. So they went to the mouse model, and what they did is they injected these mice once a week for five weeks uh, with amyloid beta. Now, the amyloid beta, uh, they let it stir in the brain, they saw effects of the Alzheimer's disease occurring, um, they killed the mice after five weeks, they took a look at their brains, specifically in the hippocampi. Um, I'm assuming this is simpler to the hippocampus uh, of humans to mice. Um, and they found statistically increased levels of D-serine in the hippocampi section of the mice that had been getting the treatment versus the mice that were just getting the placebo or non-treatment. So like, okay, that's pretty neat. Let's move on to the third section and see if there's an easy test that we can do uh, to see if there's D-serine levels increased in Alzheimer's patients that are alive today. So what they did is they got a group study of, I believe, 21 Alzheimer's disease patients, nine uh, controls, and 10 people that have depression. Uh, this is all out of Brazil, so that's pretty neat. Um, and what they did is they did a lumbar puncture, I believe between four and five, and pulled out the cerebral spinal fluid, which is incredibly painful. But if it can lead to the prediction of whether or not you have a biomarker in there, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. I can't even get my blood drawn. So, yeah. But anyway, back to the science. Um, they noticed a five-fold increase of D-serine levels in patients that have Alzheimer's disease in compared to normal patients. And then they also looked at the depression versus normal, and they saw a two-fold increase in patients that have depression for D-serine than with patients that don't have any diseases, or at least not neurological. Um, so that's really statistically significant. It's a pretty big deal, uh, especially for the cheap and easy way of just doing a little lumbar puncture and taking out some cerebral spinal fluid. Um, so what they're presenting in this paper is that D-serine is a novel biomarker for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, they don't really know how to treat it. It's just if you're able to catch Alzheimer's early enough, you can start doing things to slow it down. Uh, and then they implied that there should be further investigations between depression, the link between depression and Alzheimer's, and whether or not it's an increase of the D-serine production that's causing trouble in those issues. And maybe that could lead to an actual test to see if you know, you are probably depressed, you know, you, you are going, it's a difference between, oh, I'm depressed versus I've been clinically tried for having depression, right? It's either something you can work through or something psychologically you actually have. Um, so that's the paper for today. It's a little hot and heavy. Sorry about it, but science is hot and heavy, so get used to it. Um, thank you for joining me this morning, this afternoon, or this evening. Uh, once again, the link to the website of where I found this uh, wonderful paper will be down below, as well as the authors and the title, so if the link doesn't work, you can search it yourself. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.